the, this video is uh, designed to explain the very, very raw basics of corridors. Um, if you want to create a corridor, there are several things that you must have preset and ready to go. Um, I've got a surface, so therefore I can target back to existing ground should I need to. Uh, kind of optional, but it's better to have a surface anyway. You kind of need one because you need to follow a profile. So uh, surface, number one. Alignment, number two, because the core, the alignment's going to determine the X and Y values of where this this model, this corridor, whether it's a road or a ditch or something, where that's going to be following. Um, then there's the existing ground surface. As you can see in this drawing, I've got my surface, and then I've got an existing ground surface already created. Uh, we also need to do a proposed profile. Okay, So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to just go ahead and create a proposed profile so that I can tell the road uh, to follow this this proposed profile. In this case, it's going to be uh, Main Street Pro Center Line Proposed. Okay. And I'll just take the defaults here. And I'm going to go ahead and do tangents with curves. I'm not going to be uh, exact about this. I will, I'm, I'm doing this to show um, what can happen. So sometimes in exaggeration might show you better than uh, what a the, what a true road should look like. So let me go ahead and turn off my O snaps and my ortho and my object snap track. Okay. So uh, this road is going to come here, come here, and then come back up. And I'm going to tie back into my existing ground on the far end over here. Okay. So that will control my Z values. Okay. Um, with that said, the, the, the very next thing that you need to have is an, actually an assembly. Uh, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to launch create an assembly. And when I do so, i got to create this. I'll call this one a basic, uh, basic road. And I'm going to click OK. Now, I'm going to drop it right here. And when I click right there, you're going to see everything looks like it's going to disappear. But really what it's doing is zooming into that one area. This red crosshair thing is the actual assembly. This right here, this this crosshair is telling you from this point, I'm go. It's going to follow the x and y values and adjust itself to the z values as well. Okay. Well, what is it going to do? You, well, you got to build that model. So I'm going to bring up my tool palettes. TP Enter. If you don't already have them up, and there's a ton of tool palettes, a uh, ton of assemblies. Uh, well, let, me let me rephrase that. There's a ton of sub assemblies in here that we can use. And I'm just going to give you a very generic, very basic kind of a road here. Uh, as you can see, there's some ditches or, or other options in here. Um, I've even seen people use roads to fake ditches if need be. So. I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is a very popular one, the Lane Super Elevation AOR. Uh, if you ever need to know anything about any of these sub assemblies, you can simply right click and select help, and the help file will come up and give you information on this. Uh, we'll talk about targeting and all that fun stuff later, okay? Uh, but again, this is the very basics here, uh, but you will need to understand targeting at some point. So, um, with that said, I'm going to drop in uh, a, on a super elevation road here. And the values here, um, in this case, I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to go 12 feet. If I don't like it 12 feet, this is where the targets come into play. This particular one does have the ability to target and widen out, which I'll discuss later. And uh, here's the default slope of negative two. And I can change any of these values, okay? And I can change them now or I can change them later. So here is my default road, you know, going to the uh, right. And I'm going to then change this and I'm going to go to the left. Notice I click on the red and it just attaches itself right where it needs to be, okay? Let me move this over here because it's going to get a little crowded here. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and throw a curb and gutter in here. So let's just come over here. Uh, very popular one is going to the curbs, and there's the urban curb and gutter. 
and I want to explain to you, uh, let me go ahead and click on this because I want to show you that these values are a little bit different. They have, you know, dimension A, dimension B, dimension C, and where is all that coming from? Well, that's coming from that, that help. So let's go back to the help over here. Let that update itself. Uh, come on. Come on. And there we go. Okay, so here's your dimension A value, your dimension B value, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so looking at this will help you drive what you need to see. So dimension A is the depth of the gutter at the flange point. Dimension B is the width of the, uh, the flange point at the gutter flow line. So as you can see, it is very crucial that you understand what all of these have available for you to edit. Okay, and every little thing that has, every little component of this can be edited uh, if it is, uh, if it's an option in there, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the defaults, but as you can see, when I launch this, um, these are the items that I can edit. Okay. So I'm gonna just take the defaults. I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna attach it. Um, I'm on the I'm on the right side, so let me attach it to the right. Okay. And um, I'll leave that there for now. Um, I will talk about the rest here a little while. So I'm getting this. Let's just say for whatever reason, I do not need, um, you know, my or my my sub base or my base is, is not needed. I can always come back here and I can right click and go to the properties. I usually go to the properties to take a look at this. And there's these values here I can edit. So like my pave one depth is 0 0.08 and uh, pave two depth and base depth and sub base depth. And then if I change these, I change this to like uh, uh, two, you'll see that it updates automatically. And now I've got a, a, a sub base depth of two. I'm not going to change these, but I really want you to see something. That if you look back at the help file on this one, some of these have the ability to not be used. And notice I said some of them. You must read this carefully. For instance, like if I don't want a sub base depth, this must be a numeric non negative number here. So zero will omit it. Right here it says zero to omit. Okay, so if I set that value to zero because it's non negative and it is a new number, it will say, okay, we were just not going to use it. Just something to be aware of. Okay, so um, let me come back over here. Uh, now, what I want to do is I need to grade this back out to my existing ground. Uh, one that I really like to use, and if I head over here to my daylight, okay, uh, one of my favorite ones to use is this daylight multi-intercept. Now, why am I using this one? Um, I'll explain here as I go here. Uh, so this one is going to come from a point, and it's going to have a cut of whatever value I set and a fill of whatever value I set. And it's going to hit my target by default 10 times. Well, um, unless I'm, you know, grading in a very hilly area, I may not want that. Uh, my default daylight and cut slope and fill slope is one, uh, 4 to 1. So I'm going to change that value. I'm going to do a 3 to 1, and I want it to hit my existing ground surface one time. So with that said, I'm going to start the daylight multi-intercept. I'm going to come over here and say I want you to intercept my surface one time. I want my cut slope to be 3 to 1 and my fill slope to be 3 to 1 as well. Okay? And then I will attach this to the right side. Okay? And there we go. So notice that I didn't do the left side. Okay? And that's because I wanted to talk about this one little feature here uh, about mirroring. Uh, you can select these objects do not select these flags these don't these, these select uh, the actual this assembly here and I can right click and I can select mirror this is a sub assembly mirror notice though that this is not acting like an AutoCAD mirror the sub assembly mirror says select the marker point within the assembly for the mirrored sub for the mirrored sub assemblies if I select this point right here because in AutoCAD world that would make sense it's obviously not going to work 
but that's not a big deal. You can either move it from node to node, or you can simply erase it. It's very forgiving in this sense. I can simply erase it. I can right click again, do a mirror, but it's this point right here, and I'm going to zoom into this top node right here. That's the node that I want to mirror upon. And there we go. So now I've got my basic, basic road here. I've got a, with that said, I'm ready to create my uh, my corridor. Okay. So now I'm going to go to my corridor, corridor, and I'm going to call this one, you know, my main road. And uh, I'm going to follow the main street center line alignment on the X and Y values. And I'm going to adjust the Z values to the main street center line proposed profile. I'm going to use the basic road subassembly. If I had more than one, I can, that's why it's, there's a choice there. And remember, I have a target surface because I've got daylighting already. So I'm going to go ahead and set my target for my daylighting. And I'm going to click OK. And when I click OK, this box will appear. OK. This box tells me it's going to follow the Main Street center line. It's going to be using the, the Main Street center line alignment. It's going to be following the Main Street center line profile. And it's going to be using this basic road assembly. I can change these on the fly if needed. Okay, well, I'll show you that here in a little while. It's going to go from this station to this station. If I want to, I can change the station values. And it's going to have, the frequency is going to be every 25 feet. Now, we've already, um, uh, now it's 25 feet along the curves, but you should also see that along the tangents is 25 feet, I mean, and along the curves is 25 feet. So if I want to change my curve increment to something like every 5 feet, okay, I can do that as well. I'm going to click OK. Now we've already set the targets because remember I set the target back to existing ground. But look at that. There they are. If I didn't do it then, I can do it here. So I can daylight to the right to existing ground. And if I had a different surface, I can daylight to the left to a different surface. Your choice. Okay. And here's the widening and slope control, which we'll talk about later. Okay. And so I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to get this that says, hey, your corridor has been redefined. Let's, so I'm going to rebuild the corridors. I'm not going to hurt it. And I'm going to click OK. And really, what I've got now is a road or a corridor of you know a model. Look at my object viewer here. And you're going to see that I've got myself a model of my road. And if I zoom in here, you'll see that you know I've got my slope 2% going 12 feet out. My curb and gutter, my daylight back to existing ground. Now everything's dynamic here. So therefore, if I come back over here and let's just adjust this real quick. Let's just take this uh, profile. I'm going to pull this profile down here. I'll go way down. And I'll pull this one down as well. And we'll go about right there. Yeah, don't, don't drive on any roads that I create, obviously. But as you can see, what's going to happen is my corridor is out of date. So I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to rebuild it. And you're going to see now I have a different value going on here. And I probably shouldn't have done it solo, uh, but you get the point here. Uh, let's come over here. And now my road is, you know, hanging out in this area where it's, it's basically a river. Okay. Uh, so, you know, and. Again, if I don't like that pro that assembly, I, the nice thing is here, I'm going to create a real quick assembly. Let's just pretend that I want this to be a, a ditch for whatever reason. Okay. And I'm going to click OK. And I'll drop that one right here. And I'm going to bring up my tool palettes again. And I'm going to go to my, uh, let's see here, my trenches. Let's see here. There's a channel, channel, a ditch. Let's just see what. The, let's go see what the ditch is. Honestly, I haven't used this one much, but this one looks like it's going to let let's let it pop up. Come on. Okay, so it's going to insert a V, a flatter V-shaped bottom parameters. So we've got all these controls here, and we're probably going to have to then attach something to go back to existing ground here. Um, I'm not used it much. Let's let's take the defaults and see what happens. So I'll drop the ditch right here. Let's go to this ditch. I will then drop it right onto there. And so it's going to be a side ditch, obviously, as you can see here. So then that might not be what you want. Uh, uh, so this has to be attached to something. But let's just take the side ditch and see. 
what 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 it gives us here this attaching here and so on okay um, so let, let's just see what that what happens so uh, the, the whole point is just to base understand the basics here so I can go ahead and select the corridor and I'll right click and go to corridor properties and this is how forgiving it is I'm gonna go to the parameters tab and I'm gonna swap it out from the basic road to the ditch I'm gonna click OK I'm gonna hit apply rebuild the corridor and click OK and now I've got some sort of a looks like a side ditch where my center line is here let's go take a look at what this looks like in the object viewer and it looks like I've got a side ditch let's follow this right here okay as you can see uh, it's a flat bottom side ditch of course I could have controlled those parameters as needed um, you get the point here um, so uh, maybe I don't like that I could always swap it back out I can always adjust the, the alignment I mean the profile and, and get get the idea here again this is the very very basics of corridor modeling at some point we'll talk more about widening uh, as needed. All right. I hope this helps.